John organizes the North's defense against the White Walkers. He asks Tormund and his people to man the wall at Eastwatch by the sea and Tormund agrees. When the issue of the lands and strongholds belonging to the Umbers and Karstarks arises, Sansa says these castles and lands should be given to new families who fought with House Stark against the Boltons. John disagrees, stating that the children of Houses Umber and Karstark cannot be held accountable for the past mistakes of their fathers and elder siblings and the children of these houses will retain their family lands and castles. Sansa disputes John's decision in front of John's bannerman. Ned Umber and Alice Karstark pledge fealty to House Stark. In private, John tells Sansa that though she is his sister and can question his decisions, her publicly doing so in front of the Northern Lords and Ladies undermines his authority with them. Sansa tells John he is a good ruler but implores him not to repeat the past mistakes of Ned and Rob. After receiving a message from Cersei demanding that John bend the knee, Sansa warns John not to underestimate the new queen and recommends dealing with her before confronting the Night King. Sansa also remarks that she learned a lot from Cersei during her time at King's Landing. She is later approached by Littlefinger to see if she is truly, safe, and, happy. Sansa confirms her safety in Winterfell, but Baelish continues to question her in regard to her happiness. Just as he is about to speak again, Sansa dismisses him. Brienne arrives and asks her why Peter is still at Winterfell. Sansa explains that without his help, Winterfell would still be under Bolton control, and assures Brienne that she already knows what Littlefinger really wants. Sansa, Jon, and Davos review a message from Tyrion, in which Tyrion asks for Jon to meet with Daenerys Targaryen on Dragonstone. Sansa questions the letter's legitimacy, worried that it was forged to lure Jon into a trap. Fortunately, he confirms the letter is genuine after reading a familiar line from his first meeting with Tyrion. Jon asks Sansa for her opinion. Sansa responds that Tyrion was not like the other Lannisters and he was kind to her. She still affirms that leaving for Dragonstone could possibly put her half-brother in danger, despite Tyrion's letter saying that Daenerys's faction only wishes to forge an alliance against Cersei, albeit also detailing the military forces that Daenerys has at her disposal. After examining the letter for himself, Davos says that three dragons would prove indispensable in their battle against the White Walkers. At the following meeting with Jon's bannerman, despite Samuel Tarly's letter confirming a large supply of dragonglass on Dragonstone, Sansa maintains her opposition to Daenerys's request after hearing Jon's intent of accepting the invite to the island. She reminds Jon that their grandfather was also invited to see the Mad King at the cost of his own life. Sansa says Daenerys is in Westeros to reclaim the Seven Kingdoms and believes this mission is too great a risk for her brother to take. John considers Sansa's suspicions a possibility and knows it is a risk but believes Tyrion is a good man. He asserts that forging a treaty with Daenerys is an opportunity they can't afford to miss due to the threat of the walkers, and therefore a risk that he, as king, must take for the sake of saving the north as they need the dragon glass, dragon fire, and weapons to defend themselves against the white walkers. Sansa, as well as John's bannerman, disagree with his decision. Sansa tries to convince John to stay by telling him to send an emissary to Dragonstone in his place, but John insists that he meet Daenerys Monarch to Monarch. He does not want to leave the North but is the only one there who has experienced the Army of the Dead, knows how bad their odds are, and he will never stop fighting for the North's survival. John gives Sansa control of the North while he is gone and Sansa accepts the responsibility. As John leaves, they bid each other farewell. With John at Dragonstone, Sansa and Peter Baelish learn from Maester Walken that they have about 4,000 bushels of wheat. Sansa realizes that they don't have enough food for the coming winter. She advocates building granaries to stockpile for a famine. Sansa orders Yon Royce to see that the armor made for their armies are outfitted with leather to keep warm. While walking, Baelish and Sansa talk about the threat of Cersei. Peter urges her to fight every battle and to look for threats in every corner. They are interrupted by a guard who tells Sansa that she has received a visitor, who turns out to be her younger brother Bran, accompanied by Mira Reed. Following a tearful reunion, the two siblings retreat to the Godswood where Sansa tells Bran how she wishes Jon was there with them at Winterfell. Bran agrees, noting that he needs to speak to Jon. When Sansa points out that Bran is the rightful lord of Winterfell since he is the last remaining trueborn son of Ned Stark, Bran refuses the position stating that he is the three-eyed raven and thus can't be any sort of lord. Sansa remains as the Lady of Winterfell. Sansa is utterly confused with this prospect, 
leading Bran reveals he has visions, trying to explain the previous Three-Eyed Raven's teachings, although this just makes Sansa even more baffled at Bran. Almost eerily and without emotion, Bran demonstrates his newly acquired power to a skeptical Sansa by describing the night of her horrific marriage to Ramsay. This startles Sansa, who quickly excuses herself and she walks away in shock and tears. Two guards inform Sansa that someone claiming to be her sister Arya is trying to gain access to Winterfell. They brush the girl off as an imposter, revealing she asked for Lewin and Roderick Castle. Sansa instantly realizes it must be Arya and knows where she has gone. Sansa finds Arya where she expected, in the crypts looking over their father Ned's grave. They are happy to see each other but so much has happened to both of them in the past few years that they are at first awkward, unsure of what to say. Arya asks if she has to call Sansa, Lady Stark, now, to which Sansa firmly insists, yes, and then laughs. They smile and hug, though still a bit unsure. Arya notes that Jon left her in charge and smiles when Sansa says that she hopes Jon will be back soon. He will be so happy to see Arya, remembering how happy Jon was to see her when they were reunited. The reunited sisters then look sadly on their father's grave statue. Arya says it doesn't really look like him. Sansa acknowledges that everyone who really knew his face is dead. Arya points out they're not. Arya tells Sansa that everyone says Sansa killed Joffrey. Sansa explains she actually didn't though she wished she had. Arya remarks that he was always at the top of her list. This confuses Sansa, and Arya explains that she'd been keeping a list of everyone she was going to kill, at which they both laugh. Finally, Sansa asks how Arya got back, but Arya only says her road wasn't a pleasant one. Sansa says her own road wasn't either. They hug again, earnestly and warmly. Sansa then informs Arya that Bran is home too. Sansa brings Arya to Bran in the Godswood, where he is lost in thought by the weirwood heart tree. Arya hugs Bran, who remains somewhat detached even at the sight of Arya. Bran says he isn't surprised Arya is alive because he saw her at the inn at the crossroads. Arya is confused, and Sansa explains that Bran is having visions, now. Bran says he thought Arya was going to King's Landing, and when Sansa asks why Arya would head there of all places, he again startles them both by revealing Cersei is on Arya's list of names. Sansa asks Arya who else is on her list. Arya responds that most of these people, aside from Cersei, are dead already. Sansa and Arya remark on the Valyrian steel dagger in Bran's lap, and Bran explains that Littlefinger gave it to him. Arya is confused as to why a common cutthroat would have a rare, priceless blade of Valyrian steel. Bran matter-of-factly says that someone very wealthy wanted him dead, and gave it to the assassin. Sansa is mistrustful of Littlefinger and explains Littlefinger would never give anyone anything unless he was expecting something in return. Bran says that doesn't matter because he doesn't want it. Instead, Bran hands the blade to Arya and says she can have it because he feels it's wasted on a cripple. Sansa looks down. Sansa, Bran, and Arya, three of the remaining Stark children, proceed back to Winterfell's castle courtyard together, with Arya pushing Bran in his wheelchair. Some time later, Sansa and Littlefinger watch on silently from the walkway above as Arya and Brienne. Brienne goes easy on her at first, but then Arya completely outmaneuvers Brienne using the water dance training she received from Sirio Forel, augmented by her training with the faceless men. Ultimately, they reach a stalemate, with each of them holding a blade at the other's throat. Arya takes her leave of Brienne, both mutually impressed, as Sansa looks down baffled at how her sister reached such a deadly skill level. Later, in the Winterfell throne room, Sansa oversees a meeting of the Northern Lords. Complaining that the king in the north should stay in the north, Robert Glover and Yon Royce propose that she take power in the absence of her half-brother John. However, Sansa insists John is their true ruler who is doing what he believes is right for their people and that she is merely his regent. Following the meeting, Sansa confides her frustration in the Northern Lords with Arya. Arya thinks that she should not let the lords get away with insulting her and suggests assassinating them. Sansa disagrees with Arya's idea to kill the troublesome lords, preferring a more diplomatic approach so as not to lose their support. Arya tells Sansa to admit that she is harboring thoughts of permanently ruling Winterfell if Jon doesn't return. Disturbed and disheartened by Arya's suspicions of her, Sansa tells Arya that she has work to do. Later, Arya presents the letter that Sansa had written to their late brother Rob urging him to come and bend the knee to Joffrey. 
Sansa replies that Cersei forced her to do it under duress. Arya counters that she was not tortured and that she saw Sansa at their father's execution. Sansa retorts that Arya did nothing to stop their father's execution either. Arya chastises Sansa for betraying their family but Sansa responds that they have only returned to Winterfell because of her, while Arya traveled the world in pursuit of her own agenda. Sansa adds that their half-brother Jon was saved from defeat when Peter Baelish and the Knights of the Vale came to their rescue and insists Arya would not have survived the torments she endured at the hands of Joffrey and Ramsay. Sansa demands to know where Arya found the letter and chides her younger sister that Cersei would be pleased to see them fighting, but Arya is still bitter towards Sansa. She realizes that while Jon would understand the difficult circumstances Sansa was under when she wrote the letter, Sansa is afraid the Northern Lords will discover it and turn on her, including Lyanna Mormont. Arya adds that Lyanna is younger than Sansa was when she wrote this letter but argues Lyanna wouldn't agree with Sansa's defense that she was a child at the time. While recognizing that Sansa wrote the letter out of fear, a bitter Arya says that she prefers to embrace anger over fear. Later, Sansa asks Peter Baelish about where Arya got the letter from, unaware that Baelish orchestrated the entire incident. Sansa tells Peter that she is commanding 20,000 men who answer to John but not to her. Peter tells Sansa that the men will trust her because she can rule. Sansa does not trust the loyalty of the Northern Lords, citing their history of switching sides. She counters that the discovery of the letter will turn her liege lords and men against her. Sansa confides in Peter about her strained relations with Arya. Peter suggests that Sansa talk with Brienne of Tarth because she has sworn to protect both of Catelyn's daughters from harm. Trusting Baelish, Sansa accepts his advice. The following morning, Maester Walken informs Sansa that they have received a letter from Cersei. Sansa meets with Brienne, who advises her not to leave Winterfell. Instead, Sansa decides to send Brienne as her representative since she could reason with Jaime. Brienne warns that it is too dangerous for her to leave Sansa alone at Winterfell with Peter. Sansa insists that her guards and men are loyal to her but Brienne warns that Peter might be bribing them behind her back. Brienne offers to leave her squire Podrick Payne, whose swordsmanship has improved, but Sansa insists that she can take care of herself. Sansa enters Arya's quarters and opens a leather case containing several faces, including the late Walder Frey's face. Arya catches her sister pilfering through her personal effects. When Sansa tells Arya that her men are loyal to her, Arya mockingly retorts that they are not here. Arya tells Sansa that she obtained the faces from the faceless men of Bravos and admits she spent time training to be a faceless man. She forces Sansa to play the lying game and begins by asking if she thinks that Jon is the rightful king. Sansa demands that Arya tell her what the faces are. Arya replies that when they were young they always aspired to be other people. Sansa wanted to be a queen while Arya herself wanted to be a knight. In the end, neither of them got what they wanted. Arya says that the faces allow her to become someone else and toys with the idea of assuming Sansa's face and status. Arya approaches Sansa with her dagger and muses at the prospect of becoming the Lady of Winterfell. However, Arya relents and leaves a disturbed Sansa alone with the dagger. Sansa and Peter discuss John's decision to bend the knee to Daenerys. Sansa feels betrayed by John, and Peter suggests that Sansa would make a better ruler than John. Sansa tells Peter that Arya would turn against her if she tried to usurp John's power, and Peter goads her, planting the idea that Arya wants to kill Sansa and take her place as Lady of Winterfell. However, still unsure of Peter's intentions, Sansa visits Bran. From this, she learns of his green sight powers in which he proves Peter's ultimate guilt in the War of the Five Kings. This proves everything Peter has done to gain power, his murder of John Arryn, his attempt to kill Bran, his betrayal of Ned and his attempt to turn Arya and Sansa against each other. Sansa sits with Bran when Arya is brought into the Great Hall. Peter watches as Sansa reads the charges of murder and treason, before Sansa addresses him directly, revealing that the trial is actually for him. She accuses Peter of murdering Lysa Arryn, convincing her to poison her husband and sending a letter to the Starks blaming the Lannisters for the crime, and conspiring with Cersei and Joffrey to imprison and execute Eddard Stark. Peter denies the charges, but Bran reveals that he has seen Peter's betrayal in his visions. Sansa is unfazed by Peter's begging and thanks him for all his lessons, promising she will never forget them. Arya then slits Peter's throat, and Sansa watches as he dies.
On the battlements, Sansa confides in Arya that she believed Peter really did love her, and Arya assures her that she did the right thing. Arya concedes that she couldn't have survived what Sansa survived, but Sansa disagrees, claiming that Arya is the strongest person she knows. Arya and Sansa remember their father's words about looking out for one another, and each confides how much they miss him.